Okrema Media's Polity, I'm Sane Lamini, researcher and analyst Professor Raymond Sadna joins me for Sadna's View, a weekly commentary on South Africa's political scene. Welcome, Professor. Thank you. This political year has been full of different scenes and very interesting ones. And what do you think, after the NC has made the statement of a good story to tell, what do you make sense of on, on all these political issues we've had? Um, I think uh, the notion of a good story to tell mm. became something which people tended to mock. And I think the problems of the ANC, that it would be a very, very difficult year, could be seen from before that January the 8th statement, mm. could be seen from the time of Madiba's uh, memorial at FNB when the president was booed. Board, yes. It was booed in front of an international audience, something that's unprecedented, uh, something that happened at a sacred occasion. Mm. So one got a sense there of um, that there were was something, um, some unrest within the ANC camp because it appears that many of these people were ANC supporters. And I think what we've seen in the year as it's unfolded is that that situation of the president not being able to go and speak where he likes, just mm. simply like that, has actually increased. For example, uh, when they did have the January the 8th statement of the ANC in Mpumalanga, mm. they made everyone have identity documents, they screened them before they went in, so that they already sh realized then that it was not so clear where the president could speak with a good reception and where not. And we've seen in, as the year has unfolded, that uh, these scenes erupted in Parliament uh, where the President failed to answer questions in relation to his own enrichment mm -hmm. and the um, EFF and others more or less brought Parliament to a standstill and it led to the invasion of the riot police. Now, what I think is interesting is that the cause of the problem is not that people are restive in itself. Mm. It is that the president is showing that he has a contempt for accountability. He is showing that he is not prepared to even give an answer mm. to what the public protector has um, uh, requested uh, from him. He is not even engaging in the public protector. So that when people objected in Parliament and they started to try and pay back the money, mm. uh, the president basically had provoked that because he had not given any form of answer and the Speaker of Parliament colluded in that, didn't ask him to please provide an answer or provide some engagement with the public protector's recommendations. Now, when the uh, uh, opposition inquired over why the president is not coming to answer questions, again, uh, there was a demonstration of contempt for uh, what is a constitutional duty, mm -hmm. that the president is required to come and answer questions four times a year according to the rules of parliament. And um, the scenes that are erupting in parliament, according to some ANC people, would make President Mandela very unhappy. Mm. 
Mm. But I think President Mandela would also be very unhappy about a failure to account to the electorate through their representatives. The president, President Mandela himself, very shortly after becoming president, uh, was um, confronted with a situation where the Constitutional Court refused to ratify the new constitution. Instead of saying, who are you to do this? We are the elected representatives. You, the court, are unelected. He accepted it because he recognized mm. the need to strengthen democracy. So I think we've got a number of situations where the ANC is in trouble in the sense that it lost a lot of votes in the elections. It appears that if you take into account who is eligible to vote, the ANC actually has a minority of people who voted for them because the number who didn't vote, the number who were eligible mm. to vote but didn't register, the number who didn't vote against them, uh, who voted against them, is higher than the number who voted for them. Okay. And you've just said that the ANC is in trouble. What, what about, what do you think of the prospect of the alternative opposition forces now if the ANC is so weakened? You see, uh, the fact that the ANC is weakened, the fact that you can bring parliament to a halt, doesn't mean that you yourself have a vision. Mm. And I think when you, have, when you speak of a vision in South Africa, you have to offer something that captures the imagination of the majority of the people of South Africa who, even after 20 years of democracy, still in many cases live in conditions mm. that need to be tra fundamentally transformed. Now, the DA has shown itself uh, adept in bringing court actions uh, about votes of no confidence, about Jacob Zuma and Nkandla, mm. about reinstitution of charges. But there are a number of court cases that could be brought if people had the resources about the failure to provide clean water and a number of these other things. Now, a lot of these cases, in so far as they occur, and many don't actually get to court, are funded through... Um, NGOs uh, who get who get lawyers for these people, or through uh, particular institutes like uh, socio socioeconomic rights institutes, Siri, equal education, and so forth. And the DA is not doing that in the main. And I think this is because the DA has a core constituency. And that core constituency remains primarily whites. And if they were to devote much more of their time <clears throat> towards the poorest of the poor, mm. they may well lose that constituency. Uh, or let's say uh, suffer some losses there. Um, the EFF has, is the third largest party mm. and has demonstrated that it has a capacity for drama, for dramatic actions, mm -hmm. for um, uh, doing things that disrupt. Uh, and it's been quite effective with that. But that is not the same as offering a viable program for change. Mm -hmm. We still have to see from the, D, uh, from the EFF a transformational program uh, also, some of the features of the EFF carry dangers for me. We are living in a situation where militarism is one of the problems. Now, they themselves are replicating <laughs> that with titles like commander-in-chief, yes. fighter, things <laughs> like that. And it also feeds into one of the most dangerous features of the present, uh, this male aggression. And we need to, in fact take all steps towards ending that.
That was Professor Raymond Sadna speaking to Crema Media's policy about a year of crisis and what lies ahead.